again! Yeah! You must be bored watching this shit. Hello there, thank you for joining me in the final vlog slash podcast, I suppose you could call it, a vlogcast of uh, the No Meat November Challenge. What a fucking journey it's been. We've had ups, we've had downs, we've had a steady run from start to finish because it hasn't really felt like much of a challenge at all. What's happened? My accent's fucking shite. But yeah, it's all over, so we're at the end of November. Finally, I can get rid of this piece of shit as well because it looks fucking terrible. And as of tomorrow, I can go back to eating meat, which uh, I'm not that excited about, really, because I haven't really missed it at all. But we're going to that very shortly. Now, for those of you who've just tuned in, just joined us, first point, where the fuck have you been all month? There's another three fucking awesome episodes of this to uh, to catch up on. But anyway, I'll give you a quick rundown of what's been happening. So yeah, no, no meat November involved, not eating meat during November, which is fucking mind-blowing, isn't it? Now, it's worth noting that I did eat fish throughout the challenge, but no land-based meat sauce was consumed during this challenge. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, so that was the main target, but the I also set myself the target of cutting a little bit of body fat. So I weighed myself weekly throughout the challenge. That was it. That was my only way of monitoring my progress. That and looking in mirrors and at photographs. Photographs? Does anyone even say photographs anymore? Photos? Pics? Images? Snapshots? I actually had access to a bioelectrical impedance scale, which I could have used throughout the challenge to track my progress, but uh, long story short, I couldn't be fucking asked because they're not that accurate anyway. They're affected so much by your hydration, I think. Well, even for me, right? So I'm, I know I'm a well-hydrated human being because I stay on top of that. But I had a result before using a bioelectrical impedance scale, the name of which will remain nameless. Tanita. And I did two measurements one week apart. And the scale reckoned I'd gained about two kilos of muscle in a week and dropped kilo, two kilos of fat, which probably didn't happen, let's be honest. And I actually completed both tests under exactly the same conditions, so I was well hydrated, same time of day as in the morning. And I got results that, that, that were that different, so um, yeah, I'd take any results you've got on them, take them with a pinch of salt, especially your metabolic age. It'll tell you you're fucking 63 one week and then 14 the next, so... They're a bit of a bag of shit, to be honest with you, but uh, if they do give you a little boost as they're tracking your progress, then crack on, keep using them. I'm not going to bother, personally. I could have done body measurements, you know, I could have got the old measuring tape out, gone around the biceps. I'd have had to get a load of fucking tape, because them some big guns. Nah! Do the old waist circumference, etc. But again, I couldn't really be asked, so um, cut me some slack. I would have had a DEXA scan if I had access to one, and if I could afford one, but I couldn't, so, uh, yeah, it is what it is, and it was what it was. Doesn't make any fucking sense. But yeah, I've logged my food intake throughout the month. I've set myself a calorie target and a protein target to stick to. Uh, so the first two weeks I was in a deficit. Third week I was supposed to do a diet break. Failed miserably, set myself a target that was too low or was sloppy with my with my login. And, um, yeah, that didn't quite go to plan. So it was another diet break again this past week. And I'd done a weigh-in this morning, and I'm exactly the same weight as I was last week. Give or take 0.1 or 2 of a kilo. So, yeah, it's been a better week. Stuck to the plan and uh, got the results I was after. So, happy fucking days. Now, it's also worth noting, something that I picked up when I was editing last week's episode is I mentioned metabolic adaption a few times. Now, adaption's not a fucking word. Good England, bad. And I actually meant adaptation. So, yeah, I had a series of brain farts in, in last week's episode. And um, for that... I can only apologise. But anyway, since the start of the challenge. So I started the challenge at about 92 kilos. And I'm down to about 88.5. So that's, I'd say, between 3 and 4 kilo decrease to where I started. This is probably slightly more than I expected to lose. But nonetheless, I've sort of got to where I want to get to. Probably lost a bit of muscle mass in the process. But I'm not going to lose too much sleep over that. Christmas is coming, so I'm going to make up for it. But yeah, like strength-wise, it's been really good. Started a new training plan last week. And, um, you know, it was... Looking really positive, and then uh, woke up on Tuesday morning to a lovely little notification from my NHS COVID-19 app, telling me I had to self-isolate for the next 10 days. So yeah, that was a bit of a kick in the cock, again, from 2020 and COVID. Fuck you, COVID. And it was also a bit of a kick in the cock to my training as well, so I'm back in the garage gym. I have to rejig the plan a little bit, and we're getting by. It could be worse, but we're getting by. But you know, we're, we're faced with these challenges in life, we've got to adapt. We've got to overcome. We've got to go through it. 
you've got to go through the barrier. There's no way over it. There's no way under it. There's no way around it. You've got to go through it. The fuck am I talking about? I'm losing the fucking plot there, honestly. Fuck, you know. But anyway, I'm back out on Saturday. I'm not going to moan about it too much because, you know, there's far bigger problems in the world, but it's been a bit of a pain in the ass. It also means it's pretty difficult to hit my 10,000 step a day target as I'm now not allowed to leave the house. But um, I've been pacing the garden and I'm just generally moving as much as possible. I think most days I get up to at least eight or 9,000. A couple of little tactics for you if you struggle to get your steps up yourself, whether you work from home or if you just don't move much throughout the day. Drink plenty of water so you have to pee more. And every time you need a pee, go to a toilet that's a bit further away. So for me, if I'm downstairs and I need a pee, I'll go upstairs. Go do a flight of stairs up, flight of stairs back. It's probably 100 steps. I might do a little, a few little goose steps on the way through as well. But that's one way of ramping your steps up a little bit. Another method is to... Say you've got a big pile of shit to carry from A to B. Don't try and do it in one tip and end up like a game of fucking buckaroo. You're balancing a buck on your head. You're carrying a glass on your shoulder. You've got something hanging out your mouth. Your hands are full. Doing a couple of trips. It won't take you that much longer, and you get another load of steps in the progress. When we in the progress, in the process. Good England again, but fucking hell. Just generally, just move more, move as much as you possibly can. You don't have to just accept the fact that you're going to be sedentary, especially if you're on self isolation. There's plenty of stuff you can do, and it doesn't have to be fucking hit. But we'll save that argument for another day. Anyway, back to the challenge, and in all honesty, I haven't really felt like a challenge. It's been. It's been a bit of a breeze, really, and at the start of the challenge, I had a few doubts. I thought I'd be fucking dreaming of steaks and having mirages of a fucking half a chicken from Nando's wandering towards me, but it wouldn't be wandering towards me because it'd be dead as fuck, but you get the picture. And I really surprised myself. It's, I've come such a long way. So emotional. But it's genuinely been so easy. Now, some of my most serious doubts pre pescatarian life number one how could i possibly have a sunday roast without meat on it couldn't picture that ever happening but you know what i'd quite happily have a fucking linda mccartney veggie roast or whatever the fuck it's called or last sunday we had a do i'm counting again i'm counting counting all my vegetarian roasts but last sunday we had a corn veggie like a vegetarian length. Tastes like chicken. It's mental. Like, you would honestly whack on a fork with a few peas, Yorkshire pudding, roasty, maybe a carrot. Wouldn't know the difference. Ridiculous. So, yeah, some of those meat replacements are just unbelievably good. And, and I quite happily have the odd veggie Sunday roast from time to time. Maybe I'll make it a bi weekly habit. Who knows? Another area I thought I'd struggle with is. Takeaways, back to counting again now. Number two, second and final point. Takeaways. Now, I love an Indian. My go to in the Indian, don't judge me, is a chicken sag, lemon rice on the side, maybe a bit of garlic naan. But I actually swapped the chicken for king prawn and it's taken it to a new level. I think I prefer it. So, again, didn't miss meat at all when it came to takeaways. Didn't have a Chinese, so I'm not really sure where I would have had if I did have one, but. Something prawn orientated, I'd imagine. Maybe just a, a massive bag of prawn crackers. Saying I would have struggled to get out my calories for the day, wouldn't I? Boom! It's the one, one downside to all the corn, it makes so awful windy. And yeah, I even experienced a veggie Nando's for the first time, and that was pleasant. So yeah, there's been a lot of pleasant surprises along the way. It hasn't really been a challenge at all, like I said. And I haven't really been counting down the days till. I reintroduce meat into my life. And while we're on that point, moving forward, I will reintroduce meat into my life. But it's made me realise even more so that you don't need that much of it. You know, I've already mentioned some of the environmental factors with the cattle farming and stuff and the effect that's having on the environment. The planet's fucked. Right? We're, we're worried about COVID. A few years down the line, we're all fucked because the planet is in shit street. And I would urge anyone, I'm not going to preach now because I'm not a fucking full-time veggie or vegan extremist but you know we can all do our bit you don't need that much meat especially beef you don't need that much of it if you're the biggest meat eater in the world and you think you can't live without it you can like it's way easier to cut down than you think it is but yeah that's pretty much us that's that's about a wrap on uh no meat november biggest takeaway from the challenger that i don't need 
as much meat in my diet as I thought I did. I still have a takeaway. Veggie sausages, I think I prefer to normal sausages. You know, I have introduced some supplements to make sure I met my protein target, introduce a bit of whey, but most days I wasn't far off it anyway. You know, especially if you're eating fish, you can include plenty of protein in your diet via that. And some of the plant-based sources have got plenty in anyway, so... So yeah, if, you, uh, if you've been thinking about cutting down for a while, if you haven't, but you are now, I'm glad to have inspired you, spurred you on to, to doing something fantastic. I'm mean, enjoying the challenge. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, if you haven't left a review yet, please do so. Leave me a rating, give me a like. If you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. Don't give me a fucking thumbs down or a shit review or a one-star review on podcasts. That's fucking... Grow up. Go somewhere else. Go and do something more interesting. But yeah, thank you very much. If you'd like any recommendations or if you'd like to work with me personally, slide me a DM and I'll be happy to help. Thanks for coming. Go and fuck yourself.